They're one of the most important aspects of your fishing trip, but we sometimes struggle to catch them. Some look like tiny silver slivers, while others can sometimes be found on the rim of a cocktail glass. Coming up, our experts are talking about bait right here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, which starts right now. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. <laughs> the Florida Insider Fishing Report is back, and this week I'm so lucky to have Captain Jim Ross back from the Real Legend Central East region, co-hosting with me, Jim. You're here. I'm here, <laughs> and let's let's make sure that we get this thing right this time. Oh, you're going to be just fine, just fine. All right, Jim, It's this weekend it's all about the bait, and it's all about the mamas, which means yes. we have a jam-packed show, plus we have a surprise guest chef joining us a little later. But before we go, let's say hi to Dave, who also has a guest at the workbench with him. Dave, who you got over there? I got Ray Rocher. I can't, you know, I can't start making money with, you know, working. I got no to I gotta bring somebody in and do the work. <laughs> That's how I like to operate. Mm -hmm. So well, Ray's going to tell us all about how to catch bait and how to keep it alive once we catch it. We're going to do a little sabiki stuff today. Yeah, and he's Good just deal. the man to do so. Yeah. All right, well, we're throwing pancakes in the StarTron Central West region with Captain Jeff Page. So let's see what we're pulling up. Go for it, Page. You know what's pretty cool is you have caught bait in my region with me before, Bree. I have. And That's it was right. You know, and probably our number one bait that we like to catch here is the fin fish. And that could be a pilcher, that could be a threadfin herring, that could be a pinfish, or even Spanish sardine. After that, you know, there's, there, there's the crabs, which right now are a wanted species due to the tarpon fishing, along with the permit fishing. So the crab is probably number two. And then the shrimp, which is a lot of times overlooked, and people don't realize they can catch their own shrimp. It's a tidal thing, just like the crab is. Whereas the cast netting of the bait, you go along the beaches, you go offshore, you go on the grass flats and you throw your cast net or, net or you use your sabiki rig. But the shrimp and the crab is a tidal thing and it's used a lot of the times with dip nets uh, and you just get up along the, the current of the sea walls or dock lights or grass lines that are going out the inlet and float in your boat or be out on a dock and dip them as they go by. And then our last technique is traps. And we use those for stone crabs and blue crabs that we eat, but we also make our entries smaller, which I know Ray knows about. <clears throat> and we can get smaller sized crabs as well as pinfish and grunt. So, and then one little trick a guy taught me down in Pine Island was if you bait your uh, pinfish trap with more squid than you do, like, frozen bait, the squid will attract more grunts, and I bet Ray can acknowledge that. So I've got a couple photos tonight. One of my live well on my Pathfinder filled up with bait, just like it was the day we went fishing with you guys. And it's actually a video. And then my other one is, I didn't mention them, but we have a lot of bait guys that sell bait in our region. And that's just one of them, and his name is Matt Bauer, and he's at the mouth of the Manatee River, and he works real hard to have bait for his fishermen if the guys that can't catch it. All right, mo moving on into the snook bite. As you know, Bree and Dave, we have a lot of snook biting around here, and with all the pretty weather we've had out along the beaches, has been really good. Some of the bigger fish are starting to show up on this full moon we just had. And it's not uncommon if you get on your trolling motor and just go down the trough, you're going to be able to catch some pretty good snook. Live pilchards, again, one of the baits that we're talking about, or pinfish work real well. And then inside on the grass flat, uh, the soft plastics like a Berkeley gulp shrimp or a topwater plug like the Berkeley juke in the chrome pattern works real well. Uh, again, doesn't hurt to have a live well full of pilchers, like I said. The mouth of, uh, I have a snook photo tonight of Captain Griffin Dean from the mouth of the Manatee River, and that's spot machine charters with a really big, big girl snook. Pretty fish, very pretty fish. Well, what's going on offshore, Jeff? Permit fishing. Again, but with baits you can catch yourself. That permit loves those crabs. 
and you want them about the size of a quarter down to a nickel. The bigger crabs are better for the tarpon. And what the guys have been doing anywhere from three miles on some of the artificial reefs and structure that they have out there off Anna Maria, south of Venice, they've been setting up with their spot lock on their trolling motor and letting the crabs go out behind the boat. And then if it's a little choppy, they've been adding a light split shot, maybe three inches above the crab, just to get it down. Captain Jason Stock, Captain Will Osborne have been doing real well on the permit fishing on the reefs. Uh, I've got a nice photo tonight from Captain Jason Stock of Full Send Charters out of Anna Maria with a nice permit. And then my last species, the red grouper. You know, the red grouper's been a steady mainstay when they close the gag. And guys have been doing real well in as close as 80, 90 feet, but 110 seems to be the best bet. Five pinfish, frozen sardines on a standard bottom rig throughout the entire region. You find hard bottom, you're going to be able to catch some red groupers, even small ledges. My last photo tonight is of my good friend and friend of Rick, Kent Hickman, from the Power Pole Redfish Tour, and his girlfriend, Ginger Gordon, who runs the National Pediatric uh, Cancer for, for Fishing Tournament, which they have them all out throughout our region, and they were out with Captain Billy Nobles and caught that red grouper. That's fantastic. Boy, you got us off to a shotgun start today, Jeffrey. I appreciate it. We're going to take right. your uh, Daiquiri Deck hot spots for the Central West region from here. Captain Jeffrey says that you need for inshore, you need to get those tarpon early or late. And along the beaches from Longboat South to Snup Pass, live crabs or thread fins under a cork are your best bet. And then offshore, permit are doing really good in the early part of the day over the reefs and ricks in that three to mile, that's three, three to seven mile area, especially off of Anna Maria. You want to freeline the crab because that's what they eat. It's Apparently just, so, man, by the looks of that photo. They do. they do. All right, our Dynapack Southeast region is filling the live wells with plenty of snacks for our prize catches. So let's see where we're going with Captain Jimbo Thomas. Go for it, Jimbo. That's right. Hey, Bree, Jim, Hi. Dave, and Ray. You know, bait in the Southeast region is typically not a problem, especially in the Miami area. And a lot of boats from Fort Lauderdale and, and Pompano and per points further north they come down here to Miami to catch their bait for the day. Now, a block of chum, a couple packs of sabikis, a cast net, or a pocket full of cash is all you need to fill that live well full of bait. And there's plenty of great spots to catch bait along the coast throughout the region. Blue Heron Bridge in Lake Worth, any of the fishing piers along the coast, also in and around all of the inlets, navigation markers, buoys, and the numerous bait patches. And on the calm days, a lot of times you can see those baits flipping on the surface. Go catch them there. Mark that spot because they will be back there again. Now, sabikis, they are the preferred method for catching our threadfin, her threadfin herring, pilchers, goggle eyes, sardines, cigar minnows, blue runners, ballyhoo, pinfish, just about anything else that bites. And chum will hopefully bring them close to the boat fairly quickly. About the only time we use a cast net is on pilchards, mullet, or ballyhoo. But the hook and line baits, they'll keep in much better shape and the cat, then the cast net at baits. And we also use an R&R &R D hooker that'll help keep the baits lively and also save your hands from those little sabiki hooks. Now aboard the Thomas Flyer, we do use R&R &R tackle sabikis and we found that these rigs work well for most any kind of bait fish. And of course, a good sized bait well with lots of water flow will help keep the baits alive for, for weeks, if not days or hours. Hopefully they only last hours. And I also like to keep a couple of fresh bonita in the cooler. We use those for strip baits or cut bait when those dolphins start showing up. Now moving inshore, snook fishing has been pretty good lately. Fishing around the mouths of the spillway canals, lit bridges of ICW, and also in any of the inlets best baits have been live pilchers, mullet, and pinfish, or swimming and twitching artificials and flare hawk jigs, or in our flare hawk jigs, that is. And then around the bridges, work the shadow lines in the evenings on the outgoing tide, and in the inlets, and also in those spillway canals, you can drift live baits or cast artificials along the edges of those uh, the cuts and the, the mangrove line shorelines and also around the jetties, and the evening has been the best on the outgoing tide. Now I got a photo here of a really big snook Ooh. caught by Chris Bernardi in Biscayne Bay on a live pilchard. 
And I've been studying that picture to try and find out where he was at, but I haven't figured it out yet, but I will one of these days. I'm sure you will, Jimbo. <laughs> I know. Now, all those mangroves look the same, but I'm going to figure it out. All right, so moving offshore, our best offshore fishing has been for black tuna, which have been nice sized ones in the 25 to 30 pound range for the most part. And they've been hit and drifted and live baits fished under the kite uh, and anywhere from 120 to 200 feet of water. I'd like to fish herrings, but pilchers have been working, cigar minnows, uh, uh, goggle eyes, whatever you got. And also to get the most bites, we've been going really uh, light, stealthy. We use the 30 to 40 pound fluorocarbon leaders and a little bit smaller hooks, 4050 circle hooks. And the bites been best early in the morning and then late to the afternoon, which is pretty standard. And they've also been biting throughout the region, but late in the day is when you're going to get those the best. Now, I got another photo here of a nice black fin caught off Miami last week aboard the Thomas Flyer by Mike Jaskowitz, who lives over in Pine Island. They're recovering from a hurricane, but they came over here and did some fishing. Now, also, we got some of the best kingfish action here in the southeast region, and it's usually around the full moon of May, which is last week. So we have been catching not a lot of them, but the size has been good. Now, throughout the region, these kings have been biting anywhere from 10 to 30 pounds and larger. They've been biting live herrings and pilchers. You want to fish them under the kite or drift them anywhere from 90 to 180 feet of water. And in Miami, it seems to be the best bite has been from government, government cut north to Holliver Inlet. You can also freeline a big bait like a Speedo or a Blue Runner. That's a good way to catch a super large king. The bite has been steady throughout the day, but early in the morning and then late in the afternoon have been the best. I tell you what, Jimbo, great report. I'll take your hot spots for the southeast region from here. Captain, Captain Jimbo Thomas says, fish live and artificial baits along the mangrove shorelines and the mouths of the spillway canals for snook, and then offshore, mixed bag right now. It's still pretty good fishing with live baits in 100 to 180 feet of water, and late afternoons for sailfish, blackfin, kings, and mahi has been best. I like those late afternoon bites. Yeah, we're going to test that theory out on Monday. We're going fishing with Jimbo Thomas. Hopefully you get some of those That's going to be a fun time. It's going to be fun. 25 to 30 pound average oh, blackfin? Come ready. on. I'm working out. Come I'm working on. out this weekend. All right, the East Fish Bites East region <laughs> is swimming up current next. But first, Dave <laughs> and Ray are giving us some bait 101 tips for Academy Sports and Outdoors, Rigs and Techniques at the CCA Workbench. Look at those smiles, gentlemen. What are we going to talk about, Ray? Blue Marlin. <laughs> Blue Marlin? Well, at least I have something to say about that subject. <laughs> Finally, Dave, you have something to say. We'll be right back. <laughs> The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Feel everything. Sirius XM Marine. Weather. Fish mapping. Entertainment. Penn. Let the battle begin. Casa Vieja Lodge. Five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Shallow Sport. Legendary performance. And Daiquiri Deck. Food, drinks, friends. Well, we're here at the CCA Workbench for the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques, and I've got Ray Rocher from Miss Bit Charters and R&R Tackle. I've known Ray for a long time, and he's always been the king of bait, so he's coming here to help me talk about bait. Some days I need less bait and more big fish, Exactly. But I'll take what I can get. So what baits actually are we talking about when we're talking about going out and getting baits to fish with? You know, like Jimbo was saying, South Florida has such a variety. Right. Pilchard, for us, pilchards, herring. Call them greenies up north, blue runners, goggle eyes, cigar minnows. On a given day, we're trying for a lot of different things. Today, right. we caught a bunch of herring. And you got to kind of be prepared with that, have the right rigs. Are there, are, are there any of those baits that you prefer for different species or did, like say the goggle eyes for sails? Or, yeah. or, you, you, or will you just say, you know what, if we're catching pilchards, that's what we're going to use? First sailfish I caught working as a mate was on a yellowtail. So, there you know, you that just really They will me eat off. anything. They will. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of rigs are we going to be using? I mean, sabiki rigs are way better than catching mm -hmm. them with a cast net sure. because it beats them to hell. You yep. know? So we want to catch them with a sabiki rig. Which ones are we going to be using? Well, I like a mix red and green because baits like a pilchard or a sardine like red, mm -hmm. herring like green, cigar minnows like green. So having a mixture of, of colors really helps 
find what school you're looking at on the recorder. You might mark a blob of bait, not really know what it is, throw that right. in there. And if it's all sardines, then you might switch over to an all red rig. An all red one. So, you know what I mean. That's I call this the starter rig. I guess. And you. then if you're gonna go for blue runners, you might use something like this, you know, a flashy. Something you know, with, a, with a big head on it. Big hook, strong line, goggle eyes, whole bunch of hooks, nighttime, trying to catch a whole bunch at once. So, you know, that's the whole idea of, and bonitas, you wanna catch, you know, live bait and small bonitas. Right. So we just try to match the hatch of what they're eating. And all these all these baits that we're after will eat a sabiki rig, right? Yep. Yeah. So how are we going to, when we're out there, how do we use these? I know a lot of guys that I know, they just cast it out there. Half the time it hooks them in the butt when they're doing it. <laughs> but once we get it out there, what's, what's the technique that's best to load that thing up? I'll give you a crash course. Right. First of all, uh -oh. whoa. there's the crash. crash. <laughs> so when you go to cast a sabiki, if you ever take a sabiki and go to cast it overhead like this, a lot of times that one of those hooks will snag the line. Your lead goes, your sabiki stays. Right. Bottom line, if you can cast underhand like that, much safer. Right. And when you jig, I see a lot of people will jig up like this. They'll cast the rig out and you see them jigging up then wind down and then jig up. But in nature, what does a shrimp do? If something comes to eat him, he goes down to the seafloor. So I always lift my rig up, stop it, stop it, stop it, but always with my finger on the line. And the reason is when I lift my hand up and I lower that rig and I stop it at a third of the way or half the way and then I lower it again, all I'm doing when I jerk is to see if he's there. When I do feel that vibration, now I'm just gonna wind as slow as I can to keep a bend in the rod, let the bait accumulate. That's why we have so many hooks. And you, and you can load it up. Yep. And so then. One what? last thing, when you do get the baits to the surface, mm -hmm. lift your rods, wind your swivel all the way to the tip, lift your rod straight up, capture the lead. Now your baits are all hanging downward and off of the line, so you're not scratching them up. And you told me during the break that the amount of weight that you use on your sabiki rigs, and I was blown away. Mm -hmm. How much weight do you put on your sabiki rig? On a goggle eye rig, 32 yeah. ounces. 32 ounces. Because your biggest enemy, most fish, you know, the, the, the quills, or shrimp in nature would go downward when there's danger. When you hook a fish, almost always they're going up. You ever hooked a greenie or a thread fin and see them splashing out there on the surface? Well, if you don't keep up with the slack, then these hooks will hook together because one of the bottom fish will get tangled up with one of the top fish and you'll come up, if your rig ever looks like this, like I just untangled a second ago. All right, hold it real still when you get it. If you ever come up and your rig is like that. The two little hooks are hooked that together. That means you had two baits, they swam into each other, and that acted as a de-hooker. So, and that was because it was too loose. Too loose. So on a, on a small rig like this, I might have just like that, two ounces. And that's really to keep the rig stretched tight so you can maximize the amount of bait. Leaving it in the school is the most important part. I see a lot of people hook bait and they just want to wind real fast, get them to the boat. Two bad things happen. Pull the hook out of their mouth and remove them from the other fish that might load up their rig. Take your time, keep a light bend in the run. Right, and always use a de-hooker to get them off. I do. Because that's, if, you don't, if you're holding them in your hand and you, you know, you're taking all that slime off, they're not yep. gonna last as long as one that won't. Yep, I'm gonna show you real quick. If you get a bait near the boat, just like I said, we're gonna lift straight up. We're gonna just act like we just caught this bait. Uh -huh. Grab the lead, see what I mean about holding the rod sideways? Now the bait is free of the line. I'm gonna get him over a live well like this. We're going to just use the de-hooker to turn the hook upside down. Right. I don't know if you can see that, but all a de-hooker does is reverse the shape, the angle of the hook. So now instead of the, the hook pointing upwards, the hook's pointing downward. And he's gone. That's, that's all the de-hooker Well, that's does. it, man. We blew through that five minutes pretty quick. We can talk to any about any of these things for five minutes that's probably. Right. Well, thanks a lot, brother. No problem. And when you say we, you mean Ray. Well, I mean Ray Paul. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't let you get a word in edgewise. That's fine. It? It's okay. Dave's really okay with that. Yeah. It's great. All right, well, if we've got the Southeast wind gods on our side and the Fish Bites East region, they're bringing us some good bait action. So let's get some more details from Captain Mike Holliday, who's right there. Hey, Mike. That, that's really the key, Bray. You know, uh, we, we see this time of year, we see a shift in the prevailing winds uh, from those cold Northeast winds of winter to the warm Southeast winds of summer. In the winter, the bait's offshore. When that warm uh, southeast wind comes in, it moves the bait closer to shore. Um, get a number six or number eight. That's what he didn't tell you. You want the six or eight R&R tackle sabiki rig, two or three ounces of lead to keep them from tangling. 
And you can catch everything from thread fins and pilchards to sardines and cigar minnows. Um, in Palm Beach County, the piers hold a lot of bait, as does the church rubble off Jupiter. In Martin County, it's the shark barge and the sand pile. And in St. Lucie County, it's the 10A or 12A buoys. But you'll find bait up and down the beach. You can also throw a cast net inshore and along the beaches. I throw like a, a half inch, 10 foot Calusa net for the big baits. And then I'll go to a quarter inch mesh for the three to four inch baits and a three sixteenths inch mesh for the, the little two to three inch baits. You'll get pilchard, thread fins, Atlantic Manhattan, which we call bunker. You can't catch bunker with a sabiki rig. They're uh, herbivores, so you gotta throw a net on them. But we get all that on a regular basis. You'll also get a lot of sand perch, which are amazing uh, baits for, you know, snook and sea trout. I got a photo um, just to show you. There's that, the half inch Palooza net there. That caught those big pilchers. That's what you want to throw out on the beach, a uh, half inch size net. The other thing we got going on, we're starting to see some larger snooks showing up around the inlets and bridges and the seawalls that are close to the inlets. They're getting ready to beef up on mullet before the summer spawn. So this is a good time to target the big fish with topwater plugs, swimming plugs, or live mullet. Uh, places like Taylor Creek and Fort Pierce, the Jensen Beach Causeway, the Ermin River and the Flagler Avenue Bridge all are, have big snook feeding on mullet right now. You'll also find some big fish around Coon Point and on the seawalls of the St. Lucie River. And then around the inlets, this is a good time to fish a live shrimp on a jig head during the outgoing tide or throw up, you know, a saltwater assassin foreign sea shad, put it out, throw it either on the beach, just inside or outside the inlets, or when work those inlet docks with that little foreign sea shad to do really well. Average snook in my region right now is like five to 12 pounds, but I've seen multiple fish up to about 25 pounds being caught this week. I have a beautiful snook photo, uh, Crystal Grinrod. She was fishing Fort Pierce with Captain Brian Pounds when she got that nice slot snook and that fish ate alive, pilchard. Well, tell us what's going on offshore, Mike. Well, you know, after a somewhat dismal winter sailfish season, the sailfish bite fired up over the last week from about Jensen Beach down to Palm Beach. Uh, a lot of boats are catching multiples. It's, you know, every day is different. On the calm days, it seems like the bite's not as good. On the rougher days, it seems like it's been pretty good. Uh, and the bite's been on the temperature breaks and color changes in 100 to 150 feet of water, just on the outside of the kingfish bite. Anglers are catching the fish trolling ballyhoo with a blue and white skirt, but the guys that are pulling dredges and fishing live bait, either, you know, slow trolled or put out on a kite, uh, those are the ones that are really catching a lot of sales or, or catching the multiples. Average sale, which my region right now is 30 to 40 pounds. I got a photo of uh, Jim Hill from Vero Beach. He released that sailfish in 103 feet of water, and he was fishing with Captain Eric Davis, and that fish ate a live thread fit. Now, the other bite going on, I guess it's going all the way from Jimbo uh, Thomas's region all the way up into mine. Um, you know, the dolphin bite's been a bit off, but the blackfin tuna are really picking up the slack from Palm Beach all the way up to the St. Lucie power plant. The fish are more active on top early and late in the day. Best action's been 150 to 300 feet of water. But, you know, I've also heard a fish caught in the middle of the day off the Loran ledge in 75 feet and mixed in with those kingfish. The key to the, uh, right now is to fish smaller baits, lighter leaders, get them away from the boat. Blackfin tuna tend to be boat shy. You can troll small rig ballyhoo or put out, uh, you know, some silver, pink and uh, either pink or red and black feathers, or you can fish live pilchards, threadfin or sardines. If you can get some small pilchards, you can drift and live chum, put a few baits out in that chum line. Average blackfin, 20 to 30 pounds. I'm gonna have a blackfin photo with Jeff Atwell. Atwell, he caught that nice blackfin in 110 feet of water, straight off the Breakers Hotel, and that fish ate a live pilchard. Some chunky fish right now. Ba uh, have you bougie got a, have tuna. You got a, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Have you got some, a bass report for us this week, Mike? I, I do, you know, this is a good time to head to Fellsmere area to chase bass, you know, particularly if you like the shiner fish. Water levels are down right now in Headwaters Lake and in Farm 13. So you really want to be careful navigating around because it is pretty shallow in a lot of spots. I was talking to Captain Nathan Shellen of Okeechobee Bass Fishing Com. He said the shiner bite has been amazing in Headwaters and the deeper areas. Uh, and you can do well throwing lures, um, throwing either black and blue or watermelon red glitter colored bass assassin fat job or tap out worm. Rig them either wacky style or just rig to swim along through the vegetation. 
work them kind of slow, um, painfully slow, he said. The top water bite is also decent around the shad schools close to the islands if you can find them. And then at the same time, uh, the Stick Marsh and Garcia Reservoir has water flowing in them. And if you can find that moving water at the mouth of a canal, you can rack up a bunch of fish just throwing vapor shads uh, in any of the bluegill or shad colors or live shiners. It's starting you know, to get kind of warm right now, so you want to be on the water at dawn. It's a 60 fish morning on shiners, 20 fish day on lures, average bass one to three pounds. Bellsmere is pretty hot. All those lakes are doing really well right now. That's a great report, Mike. I appreciate the reports, uh, both fresh and salt water. I'm going to take your TH Marine hot spots from here. Dig it. Captain Mike says, snook and tarpon at night around the north and south bridges at Fort Pierce. You want to use an r, &R flare hawk or a live pilchard, or you can use some large bait fish flies. And then offshore, kingfish, dolphin, and sailfish are all showing up in 90 to 130 feet of water off of Jupiter. Drift with a kite, a drift or kite fish with sardines and pilchards. You know, the bait has really showed up big time in the south part of the state. I just can't wait for it to it show has. up in the central east where I'm at. I'm look, really looking forward to that. We'll get there. We'll uh, get there. It's, it's coming. It's coming. coming. It's coming. All right, anglers, here's a question for you. You wouldn't go fishing without bait, so why would you go fishing this summer without being registered for CCA's Florida Start, presented by Yamaha? I don't know. The competition offers a half million dollars in prizes, offshore divisions, and so many more ways to win. It begins in a few weeks, May 27th, and ends Labor Day weekend. There's 100 days of fishing, so get registered and get out there to win big at CCAFLstar.com. All right, well, we're checking in with our Discover Crystal River North West and Real Legends Central East Region captains next. Plus, we're cooking up something yummy with special guest chef Matthew Zubrod. We'll be right back. I'm starting to smell it. Can you smell it? It smells great. Ooh, it smells like bait. <laughs> The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Power Pole, Total Boat Control, Berkeley, Your Fish, Our Science, Bahio Sunglasses, Blue Light Blocking, Radically Clear Lenses, Sea Sucker, Easy On, Easy Off, Incredibly Strong, Blue Water Outriggers, Everything for Your Outdoor Adventure, Kubota, Together We Do More and Yanmar ASV, a leader in compact equipment. Welcome back everyone. I'm here with Chef Matthew Zubrod, culinary director at the Little Nell Hotel in Aspen, Colorado. And he also just happens to be my stepdad, so this is super exciting to have you on set with us. And I see we have some bait and some drinks, so tell us what we're doing. Yeah, thank you, Bree. Um, so I wanted to, you told me to do something with bait, so I thought yep. of calamari. Yum. It tastes good. I know it's good for catching fish. So we're going to fixate one of my favorite dishes, with, which is chorizo stuffed calamari. And I think it goes really good with this cocktail I'll be working on with hibiscus and yeah. tequila, lime, Perfect. and caviar salt. So I'm going to make that, right? You make that while okay. I prepare the, the, uh, the squid. I'll show okay. people how I do this. But we have a simple syrup that we made with the hibiscus tea. You can also use the, you can buy the syrup ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then the salt, we basically puree lime, caviar, that we dehydrate in a dehydrator. The recipes we will explain to you in a second. Yeah. But meanwhile, she's fixing this wonderful cocktail. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna clean the calamari and pull the, the tentacles off, and then you clean, there's a little plastic sort of like um, bone there that um, has already been removed from this one. So I just pulled it off, and now I'm cleaning it a little bit more to stuff. And you can use a piping bag, or you can take an old-fashioned Ziploc bag which works just fine. Oh yeah, I did that for you Especially in Bree's house, because she didn't I have a pastry, have a pastry bag. bag. <laughs> and then we're going to squeeze and stuff the calamari. It works great. It look totally at, works look great. Look at me look go, at look at me go. Like you know what you're doing. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> and then we take the squid, and we are using this air fryer today. It's kind of something fun I've been playing with, because it's really easy to clean. You can see we got one pan here. We're just putting it in there, salt and pepper, in the oven, this is a, air fryer that we are basically just setting it at 400 for 10 to 12 minutes. I'm going to pull it out in a few minutes and it'll be ready. Um, but uh, you can you follow the method, method recipe on yeah. the that we're sharing with you or yeah. use an air fryer if you want to try something different. Perfect. We've got all of our ingredients out here as you can see if you want to explain what Oh yeah. They so are. part of the recipe we're using the piquillos. You can buy them peeled and ready to go, mm -hmm. or these are Fresnos, which are also fun, and Ooh. you roast them and peel them. But either way, you follow the, the, the method and the recipe, yep. and all the ingredients, and when you puree it, you get this rui, 
It's kind of like a um, classic French dish um, from France. They serve it with bouillie base. They serve it on croutons, um, basically roasted peppers, and it doesn't always have to be spicy. I made it. You can it. make it as spicy as you like. <laughs> I did it. Oh, wow. You got to tell me if it's any good. I will. I'll All right, so here we go. First. Ready to roll out of the air fryer. We have our stuffed calamari, guys. <laughs> our stuffed Love calamari. It. So I'm going to let it rest for a minute, okay. and then um, we are going to slice it. Slice and dice, baby. Slice and dice. <laughs> Look at I got that. This, uh, our fishing knife here. We're using it for a little bit of everything, and That's I think fine. you can even open a beer with it too. Yeah, why not? Or cut fishing line, but this is what it should look like: nice and clean, cooked. And then uh, for the presentation, we can do a couple different things. I'm going to simply. I'm going to play with the fish eye, I think. So okay. I love your platter. I found this in Bree's uh, collection. So little, Oh. let's see here. So we've got 30 seconds left. Two, um, three, While we do that, I want four. to let everybody know that we have a QR code with the margarita hibiscus lime um, Jose Cuervo recipe. Obviously, it's made with Jose. Um, and then we have the, the stuffed calamari recipe as well. So make sure you scan that QR code to get all of the ingredients and the directions and look at this beautiful dish we have. Wow. This is like, this is Aspen style, right? That this is, is like, that is well, absolutely Aspen meets, uh, awesome. Southwest, <laughs> South East Florida. East Florida, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing, it's beautiful. All right. It's the bougiest bait's ever gonna get, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bougie, it's a bougie bait. bait. All right, I'm gonna taste this. Jim, you wanna take a bite of that? I'd love to, it's still mm. hot. I'm gonna mm. take, take a little piece here though. Let me try this. Oh, that's so good. All right. All right. Well, we're drinking our margaritas. The Discover Crystal River Northwest region it's, is now up with your Mother's mm. Day weekend report from Captain Jeff Hageman. Talk to us, Jeff. That's, oh, my goodness. Got me good. hungry and Thanks, got Captain. me thirsty. <laughs> As you guys know, catching bait is one of the most important parts of starting your day. Having the right bait to target species you're after. Um, as far as baits go, there are several bait fish and baits commonly used in my region. Shrimp, pinfish, scaled sardines, threadfin herring, Spanish sardines, mullet are some of the most common baits, and they all pose their own challenges to go catch them before you start your fishing house. Some can be bought in bait shops, others caught in cast nets, some caught with sabiki rakes. Uh, one of the most common cast nets is an 8 to 12 foot, 3 8 uh, medium heavy net is probably one of the most common. Um, if you're not familiar with a cast net, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube and uh, local bait Bait shops will do seminars occasionally showing you how to throw them and a little practice in the backyard throwing on the grass will, will get you all tuned up and ready to go catch some bait. Another way to catch them is, uh, and another way to catch bait, sabikis and um, catching blue runners and and thread fins off the channel markers and hard bottom. You can get a sabiki rig out, a little pyramid sinker and jig them up off the bottom and watch those hooks when you're de-hooking them and try not to hinder your baits a whole lot. A little fish um, de-hooking device, little bait fish de-hooking might work really good. And uh, as far as other stuff, you've got pinfish traps that work really well. You can kind of set those the night before, catch pinfish and grunts, have them for the next day so you don't have to mess with bait in the morning if you're doing that kind of thing. Also, crabs right now are a big thing for permit and tarpon in our region. And you can dip those in the passes. Uh, just with a dip net on the outgoing tides in the area right now on these new and full moves. Staying offshore, Captain Rob Davenport at Big Nasty Charters out of St. Pete reports a good wahoo bite right now. He's been catching wahoo in anywhere from 100 to 140 feet of water. High speed trolling has been the trick around wrecks and hard bottom. Using a wire leader with diving plugs or weighted lures with a 25 uh, foot long piece of 150 to 200 pound mono shock leader. When the wahoo bites, it can be pretty violent, especially with those high-speed trolling. And I've got a photo here from Captain Rob of a beautiful West Coast wahoo. That's a nice one for over there. Good oh, great. yeah, we get them good over here, actually. Getting more and more of them. It's good to have them being able to target them really good now. Moving in shore, Captain Lee Thomas out of Port St. Joe reports a decent week this week. In St. Joe Bay, the trout bite has been a little slower this week with several days of high winds. But the trout have moved into the deeper channels and responded really good to artificial shrimp fished on the edges on the grass closure and the color in the deep water. Captain Mario Costello out of Tall Chaos Charters out of Ozella Keys Marina reports a good trout bite in his region also. And anywhere from three to five feet of water, Crystal River to Ozella, 
is the area he's fishing right now. He's using both a three and a half inch and a five and a half inch uh, grub on a eighth ounce jig head, and he's casting on the sandy edges of the potholes while he's drifting. Most of the trout right now are ranging anywhere from 15 to 19 inches with a few big ones mixed in. We got a photo here from Captain Mario of Chase Bars with a nice 21 inch trout caught on a recent trip. Solid Take it. Another, and another one from Captain Lee of a nice Port St. Joe trout. Mm. Beautiful fish. Well, tell us a little bit about the, okay, tell, tell, tell us a little bit about the redfish, Jeff. Captain Jim Pollard right now says uh, sport fishing charters, Big Daddy Sports Fishing Charters, great afternoon bite right now. He said that afternoon when everybody's kind of left the water with these full moons right now, he's been kind of fishing in the afternoon and at sundown time and really tearing up the redfish. He said they're going nuts. They're eating everything he's throwing at them. He's even got the fly rod out and catching them on fly rod. He said as soon as everybody leaves the water, everything quiets down, might be a time to go fishing. And it gets really hot on that full moon right now. And he's got a beautiful fish with a fly rod, which he doesn't usually do. So that's a congrats the jam there. That's yeah, awesome. I love redfish on fly, especially if you can get them when they're tailing. That's just beautiful. Hey, Jeff, that was a great report. Thanks. Uh, we're going to take your Ozello Keys Marina hotspots for the Northwest region from here. Captain Jeff says you need to check out the inshore snook bite because it's along the beaches and the passes and you want to use pinfish sardines uh, on the outgoing tide or flies on the mm -hmm. outgoing tide. Right? They, they, they bite those good too. And then offshore mangrove snapper on the high relief structure, anywhere from 30 to 70 feet of water and use cut sardines on a knocker rig. All right, well, we have our Real Legends Central East Region captain in the house with us. So Captain Jim Ross, you know what to do. Take it away. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> bait is one of my favorite things to talk about because we have lots of different kinds of baits, just like all the rest of the regions do. Right. But we have some specific ones to us that don't come in the South Florida regions, like Menhaden and some of those other ones like that, mm -hmm. that they don't really get too far to the South. But I'll tell you what, you know, in, in my region, in the Real Legends region, there's, a, there's the, one of the best baits you can actually use is a cut mullet, um, pinfish or ladyfish at certain times of the year. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a live bait to be a good bait. You just have to know what the fish want to eat at that time and know what your conditions are. Dirtier water, they can smell things better than they can see things. So let them smell it out, get it in on the current, uh, even if it's a wind-blown current. Uh, whatever it takes to get the scent to go down down the flat or down the down the waterway and get those uh, get those out there. Even chunks like bonita uh, work really really good, especially if you're you know looking for sharks or uh, tarpon or mm -hmm. some of those nearshore species as well. Um, but live baits like pogies, pilchards, krogers, they, they all work really good, um, extremely well, especially when they're really lively. One thing that I wanted to talk about is what novice anglers do too often. Okay, That's a good one. You overpack your well. Don't put so many baits in the well that they that they start to die. And with menhaden in particular, this is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Pilchards, sardines do a little bit better. You can pack them a little tighter, like we saw the video of Jeffrey's, uh, right. you know, in Jeffrey Page's report. But it, the pogies just don't live well. So make sure that you don't overpack them. It, it's better to have a couple of live frisky baits that get bites than a bunch of dead ones that really don't get bites. Right. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is the high, you know, that high intensity struggling is what triggers the fish to strike. So, you know, there's a couple of other things that you can do to keep your baits lively. Um, but, but one of the things like they were talking about on the Briggs and Techniques segment with Ray and Dave is the r, &R tackle dehooking tool is great because you're not handling the baits. And then, you know, anything let, like they've got a, a double fine mesh net that works really good and doesn't knock the scales off of the baits. So some of these products from guys like Ray are real high quality products that a lot of us really don't know about, but that's what this show is for, is bringing those products to you so that you can go out and check them out. Now, staying offshore, Kobe is doing really good. The 70 to 90 foot reefs right now seem to be where it's at. And anywhere from Sebastian to Canaveral is really the best. So the High Bar, the Bethel Shoal, Pelican Flats are all doing really good. The FSFA reef balls and pyramids were actually doing pretty good last week as well for the guys that got out there. Um, this week, we've got a little more dirty water that moved in. So if that water stays dirty, you're gonna have to go out just a little bit farther to find those cobia. Um, and then of course, remember, 36 inch minimum at the fork. And when you put these things on ice, they do shrink. So those 32 to 35 inch fish, they look big in the water, but don't put a gaff in them. Put them in the net, roll them into the boat. Make sure, honestly, make yeah, sure they're about 36 size. and a half to 37 inches. Because if you yeah. don't, 
you're going to get caught back at the dock with a 35 and 3 quarter inch fish and that's not good. I've got a picture here of one that we caught the other day from Brian, uh, or Brian sent, uh, that was with me and that's a 41 inch fish. And then we're swinging inshore. Snook bites are going really good right now, especially along the Indian River. Uh, good areas for the big fish are flats between Snag Harbor and Joyce's Dock down in the Sebastian area, and from Hole in the Wall to Lost Tree Island in Vero Beach. Live pilchards, mullets, and croakers are all top baits for the bigger fish right now. And uh, check the shoals and the spoil islands, especially in, in little cuts off of the spoil islands for the big females. And some of those big females can run up into the 40 inch range. Captain Peter Deeks uh, sent uh, me a picture here with uh, Kieran Kidder that caught this really nice fish down there in the south part of my region here recently. And then tarpon as well are doing really good. Uh, the tarpon bite in the Indian River has actually been fantastic this past week. Most of the fish are in the 40 to 70 pound range and multiple hookups are common as long as you're staying around those tarpon schools. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing is setting up yard, about 100 yards outside of the fish, upwind of the fish, mm -hmm. and then drifting back down through. I'm pulling a live pogey or a live mullet on a 5 aught circle hook, and wherever I see those fish rolling, just coming through there with some 50 to 60 pound fluorocarbon on about a 30 pound uh, test line on a pin slammer 5500, and you can catch some really nice fish. I've got one here. I got to take Mrs. Ross out here recently, oh. and she got her first tarpon of the season, so we were real proud about that. She loves her tarpon. First tarpon with her brand new leggings on. <laughs> yes, yeah, she Looking did. Looking good, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Robin. Looking All right, good. Jim, well, why don't we take a look at your Rodan Marine System hotspots for your Central East region. Let's do it. And this week, if you're in the Central East region and you've got your Rodan out, Check those deeper sections of the river for tarpon. All three lagoons have actually got them right now. You want to free line live mullet, pogies, or you know you can just drift them. If you have a big center console, you can even just drift through them. You don't even need, uh, uh, you know, you can put a big rodan on that big center console. You don't need your main motor on, that's the main thing. Offshore, Kobe on the high relief structure, 70 to 90 feet of water. Live pogies on a two to three ounce jig or a standard bottom rig is where you're gonna get those you fish. some great tips there, Jim. It's like you've done Thank this you. before. <laughs> oh my, my. All right, one of our favorite shows is sneaking up on us and that is the kids show, June 19th. Our studio is full of young anglers and action packed with interactive stations that consist of casting, rigging live bait and knot tying, along with games, prizes, and of course, lots of snacks to keep those kiddos <laughs> occupied. All right, to sign up, head to our website, FloridaInsiderFishingReport.com, or you can scan the QR code that you see on your screen. That's a fun time. It is. You. I dare I you. I love you. Who's? I love. I'm, I'm, I dare you to come I'm out. Booked. Oh, you're I'm booked. booked. I'm booked. You're booked. Of course, you're booked. Otherwise, I'd be there. I know. Love the kids. I'm All right, the Casabeja Southwest region is taking over next. But first, Dave is hopefully showing off some last-minute Mother's Day gifts for Taco Marine new products. Mother's Day. Well, you know, these kind of <laughs> reminded me of a Hot Wheels track, and my mother would use one to beat me almost every day. When okay. Well, that wasn't what I expected. <laughs> the kids' but shows coming up. Love the mamas. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I would love that for Mother's Day gift. Just yeah. saying. All right, we'll the be there. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Penn, let the battle begin. Alta Equipment Company, where uptime matters. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Discover Crystal River, Florida. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. Best Lures, period. And Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. Well, we're back at the CCA workbench with the Taco Marine Troll on the Edge new product segment, and there's a yes, lot sir. of really cool looking stuff here, Dave. Well, we got some pretty neat stuff. We're gonna start right off the top with that sea sucker uh, paper towel holder. You know, life gets messy and so does fishing. And, yes. you know, we, we, it's always good to have paper towels around. And, uh, you know, blood and slime and little kids and whatnot, you know, there's always something to clean up. So, you know, this is a really good way to keep your paper towels on the roll handy and it, you know that you can get to them you can mount that vertical I was say, uh, you horizontal could, you could stick this to the yeah, bottom of the t-top yeah exactly and you know it's got a the new one here has a little retainer on the old one didn't have this has a retainer on the end that you can you know fold the paper towel around so the whole thing won't come unrolling on you in the wind or something right, i guess right. it used to happen with the other ones but um, it's really cool you, you know like i said you can mount it on the gunnel the hard top your console Anywhere, just to keep your paper towels well, handy. Well, and if you're eating lunch or something like that, like you're slicing, you know, some some something to go on a piece of bread, or you're slicing a, a hoagie into sections or something, you're 
slide your knife right down in the top of yeah, that thing. Yeah, why not? So yep. your paper towels around it, knife's in the middle, there it is. Keeps it nice and clean. You're always finding something, aren't you? Always. Seasucker.com. <laughs> All right, next we got the fish razor. Uh, see, there's some different dredge baits we've got here. We're going to start with a 3D dredge tuna there. All right. Uh, these are, you know, what gives these cool is they get a full silhouette from any angle. You know, it turns into a 3D fish. You know, it got that profile because of the way it's put together. And, you know, it's a large profile, but still really lightweight, low drag. And they, and when you go to store them all, they all store flat. You know, they'll flatten out. Yeah, yeah they yeah. fold right down. But like yeah. you say, in the water, you know, no matter what angle the fish comes from them, He's going to see, at, a, he's he's gonna gonna see, see a, a big silhouette. He's going to see a silhouette. Yeah. Okay. And they come in 10 or uh, 10 or inches or 14 inches. And you can, you know, make you a chain or put them on the dredge, do whatever you want. And what, the same company, Fish Razor, is making these OTS uh, lures. These are the, the little Max and, and Skip Jacks that they have. Same kind of thing. You put them on your dredges, you, you know, or you can make a daisy chain out of them. Uh, come in four different colors, I think. They're green, pink, and natural. And... Uh, you know, real strong, very thin. Uh, the lightweight and thin profile, you know, doesn't put a whole lot of drag, and so you don't have to have a whole lot of special equipment to put them on your thing. You know what? Not only getting them in and out of the water easier than some of those heavier things, you don't have to rig a mullet for every single spot on the dredge. That's I mean, you right. just clip it in and away <laughs> you go. That's right. Fishing made simple. And you know, all those, you know, they come in there because they can see it. They're not smelling none of that stuff, and we don't want them to eat it. No. No, so, you don't want them eating your cheese. Yeah, we know. What do we got here? Next, we got the Savage Gear uh, Max Stick Speed Runner, and this is a this is a little lipless plug that's made to go really fast, catch your wahoos and king mackerels and stuff like that. Uh, you can control that up to 15 knots, and it comes in six different colors. It's six and three quarter inches long. It's got an integrated rattle in it, so it, you know makes a lot of noise when it's going through the water. Uh, watch out, man! Those hooks are sharp. <laughs> they got, got trying some, to get it next to my mic. Yeah, yeah get it to rattle. Yeah, you hook guys. yourself in the neck. <laughs> it would be a good YouTube. And we'd kill it. Yeah, anyway, we would. five. It's got five X flat forged steel hooks on there. Stainless steel hooks and uh, some gigantic, gigantic bearings. heavy duty swivel. So a wahoo can't get a hold of that and use it as leverage. It'll spin, spin, spin. It's through wire hooked all the way through. You know, designed so that you know if even if the lure breaks. From that eye at the top to the hook down here, there's a wire that goes all the way through all those things, so it's not going to come off. So the on body you. can actually get physically broken away, and it's still and you can still land the fish. Correct. UV and super glow finish, you know, really nice. Uh, Where do they find Savage, those? Savage Savage Gear Dash Americas dot com. Okay. And you can get the Max Stick. Pro. And what do we got here? Well, this is a you know. Uh, this is a mini underwater LED from TH Marine. It's really cool to have underwater lights on your boat, mm -hmm. either sitting at the dock or when you're out fishing at night. It's just it's just really neat to you know be able to track bait to your boat. You can look cool, or you, they also serve a purpose to draw bait. Yeah, you can draw stuff to your boat, and uh, you know you can really. I, I, I really want one. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it, it, there, this one has an easy to clean glass lens. It would fit really good on a little skiff like yeah, mine. I could nice put it in the small. back. You know, uh, auto sealing, uh, switches through three colors. And where do they find them? You go to uh, thmarine.com. Excellent, excellent job, Dave. Um, Bree, where are we going to next? That was really great over there, guys. Mother's Day is coming up. I would love any of that stuff. Would you? <laughs> any and all of it. The Casa Vieja Southwest region never disappoints when it comes to catching the big ones. So let's see what bait we're using to get their attention with Captain Ronnie Houston. Go for it, Ronnie. Well, you know, when it comes to bait, generally on the offshore side, most baits used are live pinfish, herring, sardines, pilchards, cut baits like squid, herring, bonita, sardines, and shrimp. Mostly on the bottom will catch a variety of groupers and your snappers. Now, live crabs will catch your, you know, your permits and your cobia side casted to them. And when them tarpon move offshore, nothing like a live crab presented to them. But most of your live bait can be caught along structure. That's where you're going to find it, whether it be wrecks, artificial reefs, towers, and at times when you're heading out the passes along, along the beaches. Now, um, uh, if you're in the Naples area, Serenity Bait and Tackle has most live baits as well as cut baits you will need. You don't feel like taking the time to catch it. Uh, bucktails and vertical jigs have also become very popular for bottom fishing. Now, when it comes to artificials on the inshore side, technology has made it so most artificials anymore swim and look lifelike, along with smell. Not only has Berkeley become, come a long way on the insured saltwater arena, their prices are very affordable compared to most other brands that are out there, like your Berkeley Jaywalkers, your Hijackers, the new Berkeley Jukes, 
Uh, the war pig is one of my favorite. But old school bucktails, spoons, soft plastic paddle tails, artificial shrimp, and noise making corks will also work just as well. And I have a picture of uh, a snook I caught, basically throwing artificials. And one of my favorite lures that fish was caught on was the Berkeley war pig. Now, still on the inshore side, the report is for the snook. And the winds this weekend are going to be east, northeasterly. Weather's going to be nice. Snook fishing is in full swing and be getting better as we approach the summer. Now concentrate right now on your beaches and passes, which are loading up with fish. Like I said, weather is going to be a key. And whether you're walking or in a boat, that's where your fish are going to be. Now you, you should concentrate on your higher tides along the beaches, and it helps if you have some clean water. Live pilchards, live pinfish, but with the clean water, you're going to be using light leaders due to the clean water and circle hooks due to the lighter leaders. Eight ounce wider chartreuse bucktails, silver spoons, white and chartreuse bass assassin paddle tails, or a variety of flies. You know, the average fish right now along the beaches are 20 to 27 inches with some slot fish, but there's also some oversized fish uh, mixed in. And Captain Chris McCoven's uh, proof of some nice fish being caught right off the beaches down in the Naples area. Now on the offshore side, the red groupers. Now the reports to the north have been great if we have good weather, and like I mentioned, the weather's going to be great for the weekend. Fort Myers Beach is thumped to pass. Depths are going to be 90 to 130 feet of water, concentrating on hard bottom. Now, cut baits work best, especially if you have good moving current, but it doesn't hurt to have a few live pinfish handy or cigar minnows. Uh, while you're anchored up, flatlining while you're anchored, flatlining some of these baits like uh, herring or cigar minnows for a shot at some tuna or scattered kings that are moving in, that's possible. Remember, while fishing on the bottom, you got to have the correct amount of weight. It's going to be key to success on the bottom. And I have a picture of some fish caught up to the north while fishing with Chuck from Bass Pro Shops and a buddy of his. Those are the size fish right now. These guys are catching on the offshore side for groupers. That's a big Last fire report is going to be the permits. Now, I've gotten reports this week of some bigger fish. Reports to the south from Indian Keto Wiggins Path, according to West Fidel, are outstanding. But the weather is going to dictate what happens. Uh, as close as 8 miles and out to 30 miles are holding good numbers and some bigger fish right now in the 30, 40 pound range. Tex have been the key for these fish. Some of these areas are holding big schools with plenty of opportunity from anywhere from a dozen to two dozen fish a day. Freelining live crabs and slightly weighted crabs, or if you can't get the crabs, live shrimp on bright colored jig heads, especially in the schools. And I got a picture right there of a nice uh, fish that was recently caught. Some of these bigger permit are moving in, so get out. Weather's going to be nice. If you want to get them permits, better get out early and try and do it during the week. Great nice. job, Ronnie. I, you know, one thing I've noticed, the entire West Coast has got giant snook right now. Yeah, Everybody's sending in giant snook. I'm going to take your Serenity Bait hotspots from here. Serenity Bait Company does a great job of providing you with bait. In short, tarpon on the beaches and passes from Marco to Stump Pass. Also, the bridge spans at night from Punta Gorda all the way down to Fort Myers Beach. And then offshore, mangrove snapper on the ledges and wrecks from 65 to 85 feet of water and from Naples to Fort Myers Beach. And then chumming and using small cut baits is best to get those mangroves to pop up. Absolutely. Okay, anglers, get ready for the Key West Marlin Tournament, July 19th through the 22nd. This fun-filled sport fishing event is limited to the first 75 boats and coincides with the 43rd annual Hemingway Days celebration in Key West. For more information, and to get registered, go to keywestmarlin.com. All right, the Sea Sucker Panhandle and Front Runner Boats Northeast Region captains are ready to give you your weekend escape coming right up. But before we go, see that QR code on your screen? Well, make sure you scan it right now to get exclusive access to our live audience sign up throughout the season and, of course, all of our social media channels. Plus, we'll be uploading new videos on our YouTube page, Captain Rick Murphy, that you won't want to miss. So make sure you subscribe, and we'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by StarTron. Start, run, and store with StarTron. Berkeley, your fish, our science. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 35 years. Tin Cup, Mountain Whiskey. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Diamond Fishing Products, our reputation is on the line. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing, Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com and Strike Zone Fishing. Okay, anglers, get ready to see what's being reeled in off the Sea Sucker Panhandle region. Captain Deneen, you're up. All right, Bree. Hey, I tell you what, if you want to catch bait in the Panhandle, we've got lots of ways to do it. 
a good sabiki rig like those made by R and R fish outside the inlets or around the nav markers. It's going to catch herring, cigar minnows, blue runners, redfish, and filters. The best bait fishing is usually with an incoming morning tide, and you want to go a little heavy with your lead and keep a tight line on your on your sabiki rig to minimize tangle. I mean, if you hook a, a, a bait, especially a thread fin or something active with a slack sabiki rig, you're going to quickly have a tangle that you're not going to want to have. And also be sure to use a de-hooker so you can drop your baits right into the well without touching them. Uh, moving into the bays and backwaters, cast nets are definitely the preferred wet method for catching filters, uh, finger mullets, menhadens, and other small bait fishes. And you see a lot of people messing around with small six foot or less nets. And some places those are you know, appropriate, but really an eight foot net should be, a, be your minimum with a 10 foot being better. And have a couple of nets with different mesh sizes of three eighths inch for the most baits, but a quarter inch mesh for the smaller filters and herrings is going to go a long way when you're, you know, you're catching those smaller baits that they're going to gill up in that three eighths inch mesh net. And then you're going to find a menhaden further up in the bay and bayous, particularly where you're going to have some freshwater inflow. Uh, you'll see them flipping or wrapping on the surface, or you can mark them with your bottom machine. And then the filters are usually on the grass flats near the inlets. You know, you're going to want to look for birds or chum them up to you. Another way to get bait, especially bottom bait, set a pinfish trap. Uh, bait it with squid or carcasses overnight in the harbor, especially near the charter boat docks, and it's going to be loaded up with pinfish and a few pigfish in the morning. That's an easy way to get some live baits, but really, I tell you, my preferred method of getting some live baits is surely the easiest is going to be slip up to your, your your local bait boat. For us, it's uh, your mama. Pull up to your mama, see Steve, give him some money, and walk away with some bait, and that's the best way to go about it, in my opinion. <laughs> Rub a little money on your problem. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> hey, man, hey, uh, staying in shore. Uh, speckled trout fishing remains strong throughout the region. This is the time of year which really big trout are being caught. Uh, most of these big trout will be, well, a lot of them will be in some skinny water, especially early in the morning and late in the afternoon, and make long casts, you know, to, to minimize, uh, you know, spooking them out of that shallow water. Floating lures, suspended, suspended weedless bait that mimic finger mullets are the way to go. Fish shallow early and late, and then move into the deeper grass the edges when the sun gets higher. Uh, look for patchy bottom areas, basically a mix of sand and grass. Uh, they're often more productive than the solid grass. And if you have the bait for it, anchoring on some of them deeper areas, and some with live pilchers or menhaid can fire up the bite. St. Joe Bay has been has incredible habitat habitat for speckled trout, and some nice ones are being caught uh, on the beginning of the falling tide. Check with those folks at Blue Water Outriggers. They're having a big sale right now that can hook you up with the right tackle for this fishery, and also you know some very you know up to date information. And then additionally, the Flash Round Breakfast Point West Bay can be very productive as is the sound west of Navarre. It's got lots of healthy grass in that perfect two to six foot depth. There's a photo of a 30 inch gator trout caught this week uh, from a fellow fishing with uh, Lucky Chucky over in Santa Rosa Sound. So that is a nice uh, springtime trout right there. Big old gator. Biggin. Well, tell us what's going on offshore, Pat. Hey, uh, usually we're talking about tuna fish and we're talking about yellow fence and black fence. But this time of year, there's some jumbo bluefin tunas uh, in the Northern Gulf. They're being hooked, caught, and lost. The largest one I know of was 672 pounds, caught by Captain Ben Levy out of Destin. Uh, the bluefins are being encountered in deep waters around the floating rigs, the drill ships, and also around the fads and the Soto Canyon. Basically, all the places that hold bait, you know, so ribs could have them as well. Uh, these bluefins, most of the bluefins being caught, the tunas, are, are being caught by crews live baiting with blackfin tuna or yellowfin tunas targeting marlin. But there's also some that are caught on the troll with either lures and baits. Um, they're they're going to be in, in the northern Gulf till about the first week of June, and then they kind of move out of our area. The quota is most likely already been met, so it's a catch and release fishery until next season. But I mean, there's definitely you know catch of a lifetime fish, and there's a photo of a bluefin caught uh, this past week with Ooh. Captain Adam Peebles uh, with one shot char one shot charters out of Destin. Uh, they were deep drop for swordfish, and this bluefin ate their deep drop bait. Well, quickly on the uh, last species, we got about 20 seconds, Pat. All right, man, Wahoo fishing, uh, Jim. Uh, there's, there's been quite a few being caught, uh, either targeting them or fishing for them while you're on top of some bottom structure. Basically, look over large 
look over live bottom areas, 300 plus feet of water, and then look for floating objects, you know, trolling black, blue, purple, red, pink, you know, color combination lures. Uh, if the lure stays in the water, the wahoo can catch them. The wahoos are running up to and over 60 pounds. Great report this week. I'll take your blue water outrigger hot spots for the Panhandle region from here. Captain Pat says big catch and release, uh, big catch and release redfish at the Hathaway Bridge on Freeline Live Baits. And the falling tide has been best lately. And then offshore tees up some amberjacks on the wrecks in 80 to 100 feet of water. Cast topwater chuggers and large flies at them once you see the fish coming up in the in the column. And shop bwo.com. You get 5% off when you put in yeah, the FIFR even... code. So don't forget that. That's a great sale going on right now. Absolutely. All right, now up is our new sponsor, Front Runner Boats, Northeast Region with Captain yeah. Tommy Derringer who has quite the Mother's Day weekend fishing forecast for us. So let's hear it, Tommy. That's right, Bree. Happy Mother's Day to all the mamas out there, Woo. including you. Thanks. Hey, you know, bait fishing is a big deal here, both inshore and offshore. We do a lot of live bait here in the Northeast region. Our go-to live baits for inshore are gonna be shrimp and mud minnows, and of course, mullet. You know, just about all of our inshore game fish eat those baits, and that's pretty much a year-round thing. Any of those live baits paired with a simple quarter-ounce jig head or a fish finder rig. That's something I use on my charters just about every single day. The live finger mullet, it's hard to beat this time of year, but cut mullet is also a great bait for redfish, especially through the summer months. Redfish, they love that stinky piece of cut mullet. And you know, sometimes when all else fails, that cut mullet will come through for you. Now, if you're fishing inshore of the next couple of months, don't forget your cast net because having some of those mullet in your live well are gonna come in very handy, whether they're live or cut. Now, there's so many different baits to talk about offshore. You know, the go-to frozen sardines or cigar minnows for the bottom fishing guys. And of course, the guys that are trolling are using ballyhoos as well as a variety of live baits. And something that was very popular, and something I hadn't heard about until this year really that much, is um, using live bonitas for wahoo. Some huge wahoo caught on live bonitas this year out there offshore. And as we head into the summer months, the one bait that will get a lot of attention here in the region is going to be Menhaden, also known as pogies in my region. And I always try to fill the live well with some pogies if I'm going to be fishing anywhere off the beach or offshore, even around the inlet and inshore too. If I can find pogies, get them. The pogies are such a versatile, great bait. You can fish them on the bottom, up top. You can troll them. They make for some awesome cut bait, both inshore and offshore. The tarpon, the kingfish, sharks, huge jacks will be snacking on those pogies in the surf all summer long and there's always some great action around those big pods or schools of pogies right there along the beach now i'm going to stay offshore guys and talk about the grouper you know the season is open now the offshore guys have been catching some nice ones throughout the region here this week i spoke to my buddy nate creeter from team creeter fish he tells me he's been catching some big gag grouper in the 140 on out to about 180 foot range targeting mostly some smaller ledges a lot of those bigger fish coming off small ledges best bait has been a live sardine or a live cigar minnow or pinfish although nate told me that a big frozen beat uh, bait has been working as well now he also said he's going to go big on the tackle using at least 100 and usually up to about 150 pound leader and a 3x circle hook to drag those grouper up from their hidey holes and speaking of big grouper i got a picture this is Nate Creeter with one of those big old gag groupers he caught offshore of St. Augustine. A lot of grouper fingers coming out of that Ooh, one. Beautiful oh, black yeah. belly. Well, tell nice. us about the inshore stuff. Yeah, man, Jim, the trout bite continues to be strong this week, like Pat was talking about in his region. We've got that early high uh, outgoing tide this weekend. And I know I'm going to have my clients out first thing, tossing that Berkeley J. Walker 120, uh, 120 topwater plug. Look for schools of bait or bait getting busted on some of the bigger flats. You're going to want to get right up along the grass line. That's where those trout are going to be hanging out. Also look for smaller creek mouse to be holding some more schooly sized trout as well. Though there are uh, a lot of slot, small, lower slot fish around as well. The saltwater assassin Elite Shiner has also been working well for the trout this week. We've been tossing the Mama's 14K color rigged on a quarter ounce jig head to oyster bars and drop offs right along the ICW once the tie backs out. And I got another photo here. Our good buddy, Captain Gary Bartell, was in St. Augustine this past week for a redfish tournament and said the dang trout kept getting in the way of his redfish. <laughs> and he sent me this picture of Captain Jacob Imhoff with a stud trout that he caught with Gary on that Berkeley Jaywalker topwater I've been talking so much about. Now, also, inshore guys, the redfish bite has picked up. 
this week as it tends to do during this kind of tide cycle that we've got. Just like the trout, the redfish have been smashing topwater plugs early on that higher water. I spoke to Captain Adam Morley from Janung's Fish Camp, and he tells me he's been tossing a topwater plug in some of those creeks around Matanzas Inlet at first light, and he's finding some nice slot sized redfish. Once the tide backs out a little bit, you know, my clients, we've been catching some nice slot fish just using mud minnows, sometimes under a float, but right around the oyster bars, up on the flats in that same area from Matanzas on down to Palm Coast. Now, on the other side of things, I also spoke to Captain Danny Flynn in Fernadina. He tells me he's been on a good overslot bull redfish bite up there at the St. Mary's Inlet this week. Danny said he's been using cut mullet or cut whiting on the bottom on the first of the incoming tide for those big redfish. And I've got one last picture here. Captain Adam Morley sent me this picture of his son, Elon, with an awesome looking topwater caught redfish. Nice job, Elon. You are the man. That's amazing. That's a great report, Tommy. <laughs> thanks for the uh, thanks for the great pictures too. Here's the strike zone hot spots for the northeast northeast region. Captain Tommy says trout and redfish on the top water at first light. Look for bait along the grass lines and the oyster bars, and then offshore mahi at the stream. Watch for flyers and weed lines starting right around 150 feet of water break. Nice, Jim. All right, well, let's show our support for Florida's fisheries with a Conserve Florida Fisheries license plate. For just $25, proceeds for the redfish tag support protecting and enhancing Florida's saltwater marine resources, habitat restoration, water quality, and coastal environmental education. Get this beautiful edition at your local DMV or visit redfishtag.com. I know you have one, and you I said it's beautiful. I love it. It's gorgeous. So. It's, I think it's personally the best one out there. I agree. All right, coming up on the Florida Insider Fishing Report is the Yanmar ASB Keys region, so get your sabikis and nets ready, and we'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Feel everything. Island Lures. Tournament Tackle. The IGFA. Every fish, every water, every angler since 1939. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. Fishing for Adventure. Real Legends. Available at bellsflorida.com. Dynapack, your partner on the road. And Taco Marine, troll the edge. The Power Pull Anchor is an awesome tool while out on the water. Over the last 20 years, I would not have caught nearly as many fish without a Power Pull on the back of my boat. One of the biggest reasons a Power Pull helps you catch more fish is what happens as soon as you hook a fish. I always have my key fob in my hand while I'm fishing. That way, as soon as I hook up, I can double tap the down button and automatically deploy the anchors. This allows me time to fight the fish, land the fish, take a photo and release the fish without drifting into the spot and ruin where that fish was holding. I have found that that fish was there for a reason. Whether it was structure, wind, current or something, it was holding that fish in that general area. Most of the time I can fire my next cast right into the same spot and catch more fish. Sometimes I like to change the lures, fan cast the area and really work that spot where I caught the first fish. I then like to pick up the power poles just a bit and glide 20 to 30 feet forward, redeploy the power poles and really work that area thoroughly. Doing this will increase your catches dramatically and that's your power pole tip. Those are a few good tips right there. All right, you'll have no problem finding bait in the Yanmar ASV Keys region, especially with Captain Sarah Stanzik at the helm. So, Sarah, let's hear it. Hey, everyone from the Keys region. Well, bait fishing here is very diverse, and we catch so many different types of bait, both inshore and offshore. Some types of bait we throw cast nets at, like pilchards and ballyhoo, while other types we'll catch on the sabiki hooks, like goggle eyes. And there's also a lot of frozen and cut bait options like squid, silver sides, live shrimp, and crab can also be purchased locally at marinas and bait shops. And you can even buy live mullet from the commercial guys that catch them. So lots of options, big variety, but lots of different catch fish to catch. So it's good that we have all that variety. Um, and you know, having a good live bait can either make or break you. So it's really important a part of having a good day of fishing. One of the best ways I tell people to learn about catching bait is, I mean, book a, book a charter, book a guide, watch how the captains and mates and guides catch their bait before your fishing adventure begins. And you can learn a lot just from watching everybody, the pros, they know how to do it. 
Uh, here's a photo, but bait photos aren't that exciting, but here's just a picture of my live well the other day. We caught some pilchards, and they're swimming around, doing good. That is exciting. Wow, look at that bait. I'm not sure how well they did by the end Dang. of the trip, but there's a picture at the beginning. <laughs> well, what else have you got going offshore up down there in the Keys region? We just had our first week of open grouper season here in the Keys, so all I've seen hanging on the racks and pictures is like solid groupers everywhere. A lot of nice fish caught, good-sized black groupers and red groupers. There were lots of fun to catch. They'll eat live bait like a pinfish, grunt ballyhoo, or a cigar minnow on the reef, or you can even troll like a diving plug for them, and that's just another fun way to catch them is to troll those plugs. So when using live bait, though, you want to fish for a grouper on the bottom on structure, like a wreck or reef, and typically like an 8 to 16 ounce sinker with 15 feet of like 80 pound leader. These are bigger fish you're going for. 9-0 circle hook, something like that would be like a good reef setup. Look at this picture of these two like stud black what? groupers. That was caught on opening day aboard the Vera Vita charter boat. Like, oh my nice. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Well, what's going on inshore down there? Inshore, we've had a good snook bite the past week. So snook, they really like structure, like mangrove islands, creek, jetties, down trees. You want to look for them around like structure. So live pilchards are one of your best baits, and they're pretty easy to find and throw a cast net at. So you're, you know, back to bait. Like you really need good live bait to catch these snook. They really like those live pilchards. So um, we like to use a, a 10 spin fisher 3500 with a medium to light action rod, 20 pound braid, and a couple feet of like 30 pound mono or fluorocarbon leader, and a 3 0 circle hook would be like a good snook backcountry setup. Snook are really fun to catch. They hit your bait hard, they have a good bite, they shake their head, they jump. Like they're not huge fish usually, but I mean, they're good, they're a good fight. So here's a nice snook that was caught and released with Captain Charles Hertel. Oh, wow. What a and that photo. guy smoking his cigar. He was having a good day. That's a good day right what there. It's a funny picture. Well, what's going on with the sharks this week? Man, I I mean, sharks are everywhere, but I, I people kind of like scowl at catching sharks. But I think shark fishing is like, I love catching barracuda too. So like, that's just me. I mean, people kind of say they're trash fish and stuff. But like, to me, catching sharks and kudas and stuff like that is like so much fun. And they're pretty easy to target, too. Like sharks, if you have a piece of cut bait or some leftovers, you know, like just stick a hook in it and throw it in the water. Like a shark will find you. They're plentiful. They're all over the place. They're fun. They pull hard. I mean, anything from like small bonnet heads on the flats to big lemons and bull sharks in the deeper waters and channels. Like, I mean, they'll bend your <laughs> they'll bend your rod, but you need some good elbow grease to hook them up and pull them in. But they're a good time. Like, I love shark fishing. You know, anything that's big and powerful like that, Sarah, that you can catch in shallow water, it can't go up or down. It has to go out. It's got to go away from you. And there's nothing better to pull drag than when you get a big fish in shallow water. Oh. You know what? That was a fantastic report, Sarah. Hopefully the guys and gals in the Keys region will get out there and check it out. Now, we're going to check out your hot spots presented by Shallow Sports Boats. Inshore, good snook action in the backcountry. Live pilchards are best right now. Targeting snook on structure like down trees, creek mouse, and mangrove islands is going to be productive. And then offshore, sailfish appear. Uh, they appeared last since last week, and some of the boats out there are catching multiple fish each day. Have a good live bait set up and be ready because if you see bait showering in that 100 to 140 foot water, it could be those old spindle beaks up there. You know, Jim, we are standing in front of the Kubota, which is something new on set. I believe you yeah. have something to say. Well, you know what? I, this is a great unit. I just bought a new Tamiya Kubota and stopped it off at Florida Coast. Yes. And got getting a couple of service things done to it. I can't wait to get it back out and start moving a little dirt around oh, with it. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, Farmer Jim. Oh, Ooh. there we go. All right. <laughs> All right. We've got a bunch of keys tournaments coming up, so let's take a quick look. First up is for the Mamas in the Mother's Day Dolphin Tournament. Fishing four divisions, the Weekend Warrior, Ladies, Junior, and Pros are all invited to fish for a cause supporting Habitat for Humanity of the Middle Keys. Next is the fun Ladies Let's Go Fishing Screaming Reels Tournament in Isla Mirada, May 19th through the 21st. And then we have the Lower Keys Chamber of Commerce Dolphin Tournament in Little Torch Key. Get registered now to be amongst the first 50 boats who are eligible to win $20,000 for the largest dolphin over 50 pounds. 
And last, we have the Skipper's Dolphin Tournament that features over $50,000 in cash prizes, including a $20,000 prize for the first place team with the highest combined weight of three, Mahi Mahi. For more information on Keys tournaments, visit flakeys.com. You know, we hope you've been practicing throwing those cast nets because the reports are in and the bait is plentiful, but stay with us a little longer so we can reveal next week's species. Don't go away. And you'll be on the line. <laughs> next week, we're talking trout, so make sure you tune in. We've been seeing a lot of big trout photos, so <laughs> it's happening. Next week's a good time to talk about spring it. Spring is here, and it's just, spring is here. it has sprung. It's fantastic. Spring has fantastic. sprung. Dave, thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you didn't get to try one of these. I don't I'm, know if you want to. I'm allergic to squid. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate for us. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're pretty good. Gentlemen, thank you so much. They Cheers. are spicy. Well, spicy. Well, we all like a little spice in our lives. Happy Mother's Day to all the mamas out there. Jim, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mom. Oh, I can drink this. Me stuff. too. You can. <laughs> there you go. <laughs>